Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today we are presenting airports during emergency. Uh, I'm Ray. And I'm Red. So introduction, uh, when a major disaster happens, airports become essential assets. For example, airports can function as command posts, shelters, temporary hospitals. These roles were filled by airports after 9-11 flight diversions and Hurricane Katrina with no warning ahead. If an airport has good emergency management measures, it not only can maximize the use of airports during major disasters response, but also can pro, uh, preserve airport operations during the disaster and facilitate My the God. resilience afterwards. And this My is God. the Gander Airports in Canada. So before we begin with talking about the emergency preparedness, uh, just a brief summary of 9-11, uh, as it comes up quite a bit when discussing this. Um, this is a very oversimplified context of it. Um, but just a brief brief description. Uh, in On 9-11-2001, the September 11th attacks, which they are more colloquially referred to as 9-11, uh, it was a series of coordinated terrorist attacks against the United, Station, United States. Uh, there were four separate attacks, two that hit each building in the World Trade Center, and then one that hit the Pentagon, and then another flight that was um, ended up crash landing. Uh, the attacks resulted in nearly 3,000 deaths, and it led to all air traffic being grounded in, grounded in the U.S., which led to a lot of the diversions that get discussed with this. Okay, so Gander International Airports during the 9-11, which is the terminal building showed before. Uh, so all air traffic over and approaching North America were grounded to the nearest airports on September 11, 2001. So transoceanic uh, flights were diverted before entering the U.S. airspace to acute uh, customers airports such as Gander and other Canadian airports. So Gander Airport is attached to the small city of all the affected Canadian airports that happened during this time. So Gander had a rough time keeping up on 9-11 with all these additional flights. In August 2006, uh, Gander Airport's 9-11 experience was almost replicated when there was the liquid bomb uh, plot threat to transatlantic air airliners, and it nearly resulted in a diversion and grounding similar to 9-11. Uh, so following September 11th and the later liquid bomb plot, uh, airports had to examine their role in emergencies. This event gave Gander Airports and its emergency response assets a chance to examine its planning and the uh, preparedness uh, progress since 2001. And in the picture showed in this slide, uh, this is Gander Airports with all the airports, uh, all the aircraft parked on the runways. So if all the transatlantic flights have been grounded in response to the thwarted bo uh, liquid bomb threat terrorist at Heathrow Airport, um, North Atlantic Air Traffic Control estimated that around 60 planes would have had to go to Gander Airport, uh, which is a lot more than they normally handle. It would have probably been a similar situation as on the last slide. Um, since then, Gander has revised their emergency plans and they optimize their response to similar incidents for the near future, so they just remain more prepared. Uh, so uh, uh, major uh, regional threats in Gander airports is the 9-11 flight diversions and the 2006 transatlantic aircraft flight. And actual response uses and mitigation measures are uh, emergency response operations, sheltering, uh, refugee service and processing, communications, logistics, uh, provide physical facilities, and uh, continuation of uh, operations. So this is an example, but this is uh, in 2001 in the uh, in Gander Academy. So not exactly in the airports, but this can show an idea of the, how to use airport. And then here are just some of the future uh, greatest regional threats to uh, airports similar to Gander. Uh, terrorism, whether it's domestic or foreign, poses a very serious issue as aircraft can be used for nevarious purposes as seen in 9-11. Uh, any major catastrophe 
in the North American or European destination airport that has a lot of traffic, if something serious happens at one of those airports, it affects airports all across the world. Failure of an ATC system uh, was a, is a huge issue. If there's too many large-scale uh, aircraft operations in an airport without ATC, they can't function. And then recently we saw a similar example of something like this happening with the pandemic leading to a lot of shutdowns. Uh, and it's a little bit of a different emergency preparedness as they have to prepare to deal with uh, disease instead. Uh, so why is having a plan important? So having an emergency plan is very important to airports. Uh, well, an emergency may not be taking place at an airport. It may be in the vicinity of a nearby airport, leading to congestion and uh, traffic issues. Uh, having a proper plan can prevent uh, turmoil at an airport while also assisting those nearby. And then this is the advisory circular that's related to the topic, AC 150-5231C, emer uh, Aircraft Emergency Plan, and then it has a consolidated air advisory circular included in change two. Um, so just a description of this one. Um, it provides guidance to an airport operator in the development and implementation of emergency aircraft or airport emergency plans, or AEPs. Uh, it addresses essential emergency-related and deliberate actions that plan for the safety of uh, people at the airport and emergency services for the airport population and around the community nearby. So it brings all the different branches of the airport together for safety. And then, so the next few slides will be some questions. Uh, we'll just hover the screen on them for a little bit so that way people can go over them. And these are references. Thank you for your time. Thank you.